from Church from Clarity Craft here in the UK. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. It's lovely to have your company. I shall do my usual little bit of waffling until we see some eyes in the room. I see Karen McCaw was first in the room over on YouTube, keen to get started, no doubt. So um, normally we've got the, the lovely Mo is normally the first one in the room. I reckon she'll be second in the room today. So um, yeah. Oh, apparently the rain's going to stop soon. There we go. Oh, Susan, Mo, third in line, Mo. Oh, I don't know, slipping up there. <laughs> Good morning, Carol, Jill, Karin. Um, yeah, it's Tuesday again. And um, what amazing weather we've had down here in Kent over the past few days. And today we've had some rain, some much needed rain. Um, so, so yeah, but it's still very warm. I've got the fan going on over there. I've got a fan going on underneath the table. Um, it's still quite muggy. So, uh, Lovely Pat in the room, Josie, Ken, Glynis. Um, Mo says she's got a week off, so she's allowed to be late. But it wasn't exactly late. You were just number three in the little pop-up messages that I see when everyone comes in the room. So um, what's the weather like with everybody? Have you all had lovely weather? Have you had rain? It was strange because I saw something on Instagram the other day, and I think Peterborough, I think on Sunday, it was torrential rain. Um, there we go, lovely Jane. Um, yeah, it's very mixed, isn't it? Very strange weather for September. Um, and now, I mean, it's lovely and warm and sort of sunny, and then it gets dark really, really quickly of an evening now, um, which is a bit weird considering it's because you just automatically associate the hot weather with summer, longer days. So, um, yeah. So, rain on Sunday. I know it's weird, isn't it, how the sort of the, the weather just goes from place to place, which it would really, which that was a load of rubbish, what I just said, but obviously. So, Cheryl can't join in today. She's at the garage waiting for a car. Um, it doesn't matter. You're, you're here. You can always come back and watch later. Today, 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 apart from working on the next tool in the handbook, um, I'm going to give you a sneaky peek of the TV shows coming up this week, which I'm sure, um, well, I think you may like. I think you may like. Um, Stuart's in the room with you today. Um, he said the sound is good, so I'm glad about that. Otherwise, I've been just waffling for no particular reason. Um, so if you've got any questions, Stuart's there to help. But we've, as always, we've got the lovely design team in the room as well. And they're always on hand to help because they're good like that. Not only helping you at home, but also helping me here. Um, the lovely Josie and Jane have helped prep for the Groovy One Day special coming up on Wednesday, tomorrow, tomorrow, Wednesday. Uh, you think I'd know what day it is, wouldn't it? Tuesday, Groovy Tuesday. This week is, it feels a weird week. Yesterday I thought it was Tuesday and then I panicked at 10 o'clock thinking, oh, and then realised it was Monday. Um, so yes, yeah, so we've got a Groovy One Day special tomorrow um and then on which continues into thursday and then i've got a couple of extra shows on thursday as well so i'm doing um two hours back to back i'm doing 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock with the ods which is groovy then 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock with dies um and then at two o'clock it's the final hour of the groovy one day special so it's two till three and then three till four, I'm then doing the second hour with the fantastic brand new dies. So, um, so yeah, but I'll give you a, a schedule of what's coming up because then on Friday night, we've also got the craft along as well. So, but hey ho, it's good to be busy. It keeps me out of trouble, as they say. So where are we heading today on our groovy journey? Okay. So we've been working through um, this fantastic handbook um, by Linda Williams. It's volume two, 
Um, many of you I've seen have been catching up and buying volume one as well. So, um, but we're working on number two. And these are, are fantastic books. And book two is much bigger than uh, book one. Linda guides us through the various different tools. And then at the end, you've got some fantastic projects for you then to, to practice and put in to action. But on top of that, we've also got um, the Clarity Matters blog where the lovely Josie Davidson has been um, creating some fantastic um, little tag art where um, she's been showcasing the tools that we've been looking at. So the tool we're looking at this way, I'm going backwards in the book, aren't I? Let's just have a look. Linda would have definitely have done a project. So, so there's the Pico Vs that we looked at in sessions one, two, and three. And then I reckon, all right, the cross tool. This is the tool we're gonna look at today. And Linda's put this into to practice in this lovely project. She's used, a, she's, used a, she's used one of her lovely flower plates on there. And you can see, uh, which it's Linda's one, two, three butterfly a4 square and a5 square plates and then she's incorporated the cross tool in the design so maybe you want to give this go i'm sure many of you have these plates and linda's given us an additional pattern there which you would need to um photocopy okay so let's go back to so last week we had a look at the angle tool and we had a, a play with that one and this is where we were seeing, um, apologies, it was, sorry, yes, Josie, it was Glynis that did the tags. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I've got names going around in my head, you wouldn't believe. Um, so, um, yes, I'll have, we'll have a look at the tags in a minute that Glynis has done. Apologies, Glynis. Um, so, yeah, and last week, this is where we saw aliens, apparently in these designs. Um, so I'm wondering what we're gonna see this week. Um, maybe that's why, yeah, okay. So the next, so then we looked at, yeah, that was the angle tool. And now we're gonna have a look at the cross tool. So we have the, the finished sampler on parchment that Linz has done. Then we have our sort of cutting and perforating and embossing guide on here. Then we have um, some information about the cross tool. And the cross tool has 12 needles, okay? 12 needles in one tiny little tool. So we're definitely gonna need to lubricate those needles when we start. So, and then this is the, the pattern that I've already photocopied. So we need to have our pattern photocopied, which I've got here. So let's put our list of bits and pieces um, of what we're going to need. We're going to need, says, we need our Pico foam, which is four mil in depth. Okay. Or if you're working on the light panel, your translucent foam, we're going to need our super foam. Now, whether you go for the A4 or the 12 by 12, it's entirely up to you. We're going to need one of our photocopied patterns, some parchment, two tumble dry sheets, might as well say two, two tumble dry sheets. We're going to need our cross tool, which looks like this on the end. Okay, we're going to need the one needle fine for when we come to reperforate. We're going to need a groovy guard, and we're going to need some groovy tabs. So that's what we're going to need for this morning session. I think that's all. And while you're gathering your bits together, let's have a look at these lovely tags that Glynis has created. Okay, so these two pieces here are using the Pico V small tool. And as I say, you can go back, I'm sure Stuart could pop the link up to the Clarity Matters blog 
because even if you're tuning in for the first time, you can go back and look at all of these tutorials using the various tools that Glintz has created on the blog. So those two are using the Pico V small. Then we have our Pico V medium going around the outside and the lovely patterns in the middle. Then we have this, this one here combines the large, the medium and the small Pico V. And this one uses the large Pico V. Then these next two pieces, which was last Sunday's blog. This is using the angle tool. And then this week's upcoming blog is going to be using the cross tool. So here's two pieces that Kalinus was, will guide us through using. I mean, look, you've got little heart in there. You've got little frames. I love this. Let me bring this up. This is all been, actually, let me come in on this one. There we go. There we go. Great. So this frame around the outside has all been created using the cross tool um, embossed and then pico cut. Isn't that amazing? And then these little patterns here all been done with the cross tool as well. So it's a quite an interesting tool, this one. So, and then the other one, oh, sorry, wrong camera. I press number four, there's nothing attached to number four. And then the final one is the four in four tool. Um, Glynis very kindly, oh, Glynis very kindly sent me all these lovely little tags and um, so that I can showcase. But we've got more tags that um, will be coming up on the blogs as we work through the tools. Okay. Are we ready to rock and roll, as they say? So, right. Thank you. Thank you, Jane, for popping that link up. There we go. So if you want to look at all those past tutorials, um, then click that link. Or if you go to the Clarity website, um, then you can, oh, there we go. Stuart's put the blog up as well. Coming in thick and fast. Um, yeah, if you can't find the link or click the link, because I know it only posts in Facebook, it doesn't appear on YouTube. So if you're watching via YouTube, if you just go to the Clarity Crafts website and then go to Inspiration across the top, then you'll find all of the blog tutorials listed down there. Okay. Right, so I think we're ready to get started because what happens on a Groovy Tuesday? How quickly does the hour go? Way too quickly. And I've got lots to show you today. So we've got our Pico foam. And to start off with, I'm going to take my parchment and I'm going to wipe it on both sides. Okay. And the reason we're going to wipe on both sides, because if I want to do some embossing, um, it needs, I need to be able to, the tool needs to be able to move on the, the back. Okay. So now we're going to take our pattern like so. Now, before I take my pattern down, I nearly forgot. Um, so this is episode 112, Bonnie. Um, okay, so we've got a tumble dry sheet. Then I've got my pattern. Then I've got my piece of parchment. And then I'm going to take my groovy tabs, which are on my groovy guard. And just blew that out of the way. There we go. So we're going to attach that there. And we're going to attach that there. Then I'm going to take my cross tool. And before we get started, I mean, look, look at all those needles in there. 12 needles. So it's going to take a little bit of um, puncturing to get that through. 
both the parchment and the paper. So what I'm going to do to help with that is I'm going to take my super foam and I've got another tumble dry sheet and I'm just going to perforate my tumble dry sheet. And what that's going to do is going to help lubricate the needles. Okay. I reckon I'll need a new one soon. Okay. Next thing I definitely need are my glasses. Okay. So let's pop that to one side. That's one side. Now, let's have a look in the book at what we can have a look at today. So... Anyone see any aliens today? I'm not sure I do, but see, look, here's this lovely border um, that Lynn has created in that piece of artwork. Let me bring this in just to show. Look, isn't that clever? Who default it? Who default it? See, I love this as well. I reckon I want to give this one a go. Okay, which is this one here? Okay, so should we start with this one first? I reckon so. We'll go for this one first. Right. So it's, believe it or not, it's this one here. So that's where we're going to start. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to come in on the side camera because we've established from previous episodes that the side camera is the best one to come in from. Now, I think what I may also do, I think I, I sort of need to warm up a little bit, not temperature wise, but um, just practice with the tool. Okay, so as a warm up, I'm going to do this one. I think I'm going to do this one to warm up because sometimes you look at this and you think, wow, where do I start? I mean, look at this one here. So many dots. And then you've got this one up here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to break it down bit by bit. Okay. So if I come in on this side camera now, so where am I going? So let's do this one here. So I need to move that groovy tab out of the way. Uh, we're going to come in. And it's this one here. There we go. Right. Thank goodness Mo can't see any aliens today. That pleases me. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's have a look at the tour. So when you have a look at the tour, they have these little dots on the outside and that would indicate the top and the bottom of the tool so if i take see there's lots of needles in this one really does take a little bit of having a look at where now which one is going to work for me is it going to be better to go from the back and tilt towards me or is it going to be better to go from the there. You've got to get your eye in. Um, oh, look at that. Glynis just said that as well. See, we think alike, Glynis. I don't know if that's good or bad for you. <laughs> but you, yeah, you've definitely got to get your eye in on this one. Um, and I reckon I'm sort of, I'm just holding it there and I'm just going, all, I'm turning my head all the way around just to see if I'm in the right place. And we're not committing until we actually perforate. So, look, let me show you what I'm doing. Oh, you think I'd know these cameras. Back. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going like this and I'm going, right, okay. And so once you've done the first one, you sort of, you get your eye in, don't you? And I'm just holding the top of the tool. <laughs> right, camera three, there we go. Right, let's give it a go. At the end of the day, um, it's a piece of paper and we're warming up, aren't we? So, okay, let's give it a go. Okay, well, it's gone through. 
<laughs> it's definitely gone through. Okay. Groovy guard, this little section in the middle, um, this little aperture, definitely helps. Yes, that's worked. So now, keep the tool in the same position. And there's no rush, sir. You just want to get your eye in. Actually, it was a lot easier to perforate than what I suspected. Okay, then moving along. And do the next one. So don't forget, if you wish to continue this pattern, then all you would do is just move your parchment along and carry it on, okay? The middle four needles give you two different designs depending on which way you perforate. Is that right? Oh, uh, is it? I, yeah, I suppose I can see that. Yeah, because if you look, let me come in on the overhead. I'm going to zoom in now on the overhead because I can definitely do that. Oh. All right, hang on, which way am I going? I'm going in, so I'm coming this way. Coming in nice and slowly. There we go. Okay, yeah, so if you look here, depending on what way you position the tool. Let me bring that down, sorry. There we go. As um, Sue just said, depending on the way in which you hold the tool will give you a different look. That one's the same as that one, but that one is different to that one. So it's all about, so if we take the tool where we have the, the pink dot, which we can see this side and this side, you can't see that, can you? The dot is here, and the dot is here. We'll give you that pattern. But then on this one, if I turn it round, the dot is here, and the dot is over here. Okay, just let's, 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 let's do this one then. I'm gonna, right, so that one's gonna go there. And I'm going to turn it, so basically the dot is, the dot, the dot was behind, like so, here, and in order to, when I come across, I've just turned it slightly away from me, and now the dot is here, okay, so and perforate. So let me show you a different way. So if I take a pen, like one here, so the pink dot on the tool is here and here, and on this one, the pink dot is here and here. So you do get a different look um, depending the angle in which you not the angle, the position of your tool, so to speak. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're gonna, I'm going to have a look at this one. I'm just going to perforate loads of different areas. So we've perforated this one. I'm going to do this one next. Okay, so let's section off the area. Bring that back in on the camera over here. Slide it over. There's a bit of glare on the groovy card. I'm going to get my eye in. So, the dot is this side. And perforate. And perforate. And perforate. So what I was doing, when I, I was sort of lining up, I mean, it will work differently for different people. What I was doing, because obviously I can only see the back and the side of the tool, I was lining these two up with these two here. So if those needles there are in position on the pattern, 
then you'd hope that the ones around the back that you can't really see are lined up as well. Okay, so now let's have a look at the, the heart. This one's interesting. So let's start, I've got the dot at the bottom, like so. Okay, so I'm following that same thing, I'm looking here, I'm looking here, and I'm looking here. Okay, then, right, okay, so this one is I'm going to go back into these two dots to anchor, so to speak. Yeah. There we go. And I'm going to come over here. Definitely takes a little bit of practice, this one. There we go. Went a little bit wonky. The first one went wonky. Okay. Um, so, what was this tip from Guinness? If you go freehand, like around the top of the tag, just keep your eye on the two needles that go nearest the line. Hook into the perforation you've already done and go for it. Work on a bit of old scrap first. Great tip from Glynis there. I mean, how does Glynis know this? She's already created her lovely piece of artwork. And if I bring this piece of artwork in here, because if you look, Glynis has used the pattern from the book to create the straight edges, but then to go around the outside, you see, there isn't there isn't a curve on the um, on the printed pattern from Linda. So you're going freestyle. So you have to tune in to the blog on Sunday and see how Clinis tackles that. And I'm sure she'll have lots more tips on that on the blog. Okay. So, a slurp of cold coffee. Okay. I tell you, I'm so excited about this upcoming um, one day special on um, tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. tomorrow. Um, I'm going to give you a sneaky peek now. I can't. I know. I know. We're meant to be looking at the cross tool, and um, we'll come back to the cross tool. But I want to show you what's coming up with Groovy. Okay. So we can always cover this tool again next week as well, if we. Right. Okay. Are you ready? I've got it all laid out here. What was that? Oh, you don't want to see. You don't want to see. Okay. Should we go back to the? Cross tool, shall we? Go back to the cross tool. What do you want to see? What's coming up? I'm terrible. I know, I know. I can hear you all shouting at me. Believe it or not, I can hear you. Okay, right. So, many of you, let me just change the overhead camera. Okay. I'm terrible, aren't I? I just need to put something in just to give me, because I need to zoom way, zoom out. So let me, that just, the screen hasn't gone funny. I'll just put the white super foam in. So I just need to, oh, sorry, went too quick. Too excited. Okay, right, that just gives me the, the idea. Right, okay. So, right, okay. Um, for those that follow Barbie in the Shack, um, earlier in the year, you created these beautiful sort of Japanese butterflies and flowers. Um, and back in, I think it was July, Barb did a fantastic one day special using the stamps and the stencils. And a lot of the artwork is sitting behind me. Okay. And I need to remember to take that. So Stuart, can you remind me afterwards, I need to take this artwork with me. <laughs> Because it's behind me, but I can see it, but I'll forget. Anyway, so 
And everyone said, oh, please, 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 can we have it in groovy? Okay. So, plate number one. It's lovely, isn't it? It looks really nice. I know, I know. I haven't switched the camera. Okay. Right. So these are A5 square plates. This one is beauty. Now, the difference between the stamp and the groovy, the stamp was this design in the middle, and then this was a lovely stencil. Okay. So now it's combined because we can with groovy. Okay. So this one is beauty. You've got the lovely Japanese symbol. You've got the beautiful butterflies and the flowers and the frames and okay so that's number one then we have peace i love this it's like a water lily i love this jazz has worked really well on um transforming these into groovy plates okay so we've got that one and then the third in the collection is love lots of dotted background that you can include or exclude so lots of different design elements on them and obviously you can mix and match all of the the frames so you could take this butterfly and put this frame around it or take that frame or, or just use the frame or blah 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 um okay then next we then have the symbols so serenity strength courage wisdom yin yang art belief and what we've also introduced is this was a last minute addition so the design team didn't even get these um this is a little spacer plate so that this fits perfectly within your plate mate from the start kit okay so it's the same three butterflies that are on the plates but in diddly little um bijou butterflies Okay, then there's more, there's more. Who said that? Frank Carson, Frank Carson. Okay, then this is Jazz's artwork. So Jazz worked alongside Barbara with this. And this is the semi-circle dotted lace frames collection. Okay, and so what you've got, you've got six different semi-circles. So you've got hope you have the best day ever, hope you have the best day ever, thinking of you always, wishing you many more years of happiness, happy anniversary, sending you love and hugs on your special day, love and hugs and kisses, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, it's time to party, thank you for being the best friend I could ask for, thank you for everything. We wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from our home to yours. So you have all these sentiments, okay, all of these different um, frames that obviously you can turn into circles. You've got all the, this, I love this. I was looking at what um, Josie and Jane have um, created for me to showcase on TV. As I was going through where I said, I'm going through this, where's this pattern come from? And it was right there in the middle of me, in the middle of me, in the middle of the plate. So this is a lovely A4 plate, okay? So that is what is going to be the one day special. So you've got the A4 plate, you've got your three A5 squares, you've got your A6 and your spacer, okay? So now this is what makes it easy for me. This, let me share, share, let me share some artwork with you. So the first piece has been created by Julie Campbell. So she hasn't even used the solid line around the outside, combined it with that semicircle dotted lace frame, lovely little pico cut butterfly fluttering. Oh, is it Jimmy Cricket? Okay, okay. <laughs> I thought it was Frank Carson. Okay. And look, what's this I see around the outside? Could that be a Pico V? Let's have a look. What? Da, 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 da. 
wave perforating tool. Oh, okay. My bad. Look like a Pico V. Okay. Right. So there's one piece from Julie. Then this is a lovely piece created by Francis. All this artwork from the design team, as I've been opening it up, has just blown me away. A lovely piece by Carol Pankstello. It's in just changing the colours. Um, I love this one by Julie Campbell. So she's made a sort of like a square frame. So she's taken the round and turned it into a square. Okay. Then the next piece is from the lovely Glynis. Now, Glynis, I reckon, am I going to get this one wrong as well? I reckon that's the um, Pico Vito around the outside. Should we have a look on the back? Pico V2. There we go. Rainbow River Companion Paper. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful. Then we have a piece by Carol Baker. Pink and grey, absolutely beautiful. Okay, look at that. Combining that lovely semicircle frame instead of the frame that comes with the plate. Lovely butterfly on the front. Then we've got a piece by Carol Jackson. Look at this. This is, how funky is this? It's sort of like one of those that keep giving and giving. And then so that's from Karen Jackson. I wonder whether Karen's used. Look, let me have. A, I've got a check now. Doesn't say. I reckon that's the Pico V around the outside. And then the final piece that I'm going to share with you is from Carol Pankstello. So it's created sort of like it's a lovely wrap, isn't it? And there's a lot more. Lot there is a lot more artwork to show. And. Um, over the next couple of days, so today, because while Barb and Dave are away on business, I'm picking up on the blog. So today's blog will be the design of the week plus details of the what's coming up on TV. Tomorrow's blog will be all about the one day special with all the artwork in there from the design team. Thursday's blog will be about the brand new fresh cut dies. And Friday's blog will be about the craft along. Okay, so I've got them all ready to go. I've built them. I've just got to remember to post them, which I'm sure I will. So that, in a nutshell, is what's coming up on Wednesday. Okay. So let me just pop all of this back over here. Okay. And let me just bring in, just so you can maybe take a screenshot if you want to, or there we go. So this is what we've got coming up. Um, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So, so I go up to TV tomorrow morning, get everything set up. I've got set up the groovy and the dye show. So that, cause obviously I'm going to go groovy dies, groovy dies. Uh, and then we're going to chill out for a couple of hours on Friday evening using the Linda Williams layering frame set three, the Oriental. And I thought we'd do that lovely blue and white one um, that Linda created. And um, there will be a, a list of ingredients that you can download from the website. Um, then, um, but that will all be in today's blog, telling you all about that. Okay, I'm so excited about it. the design. I love the designs in the south. I mean, when you was doodling it in the shack with Barb earlier in the year, um, and it was just all coming together, those flowers, the butterflies, really, really stunning. So, um, so now I'm going to share with you the dyes that Jazz designed that are coming up on Thursday at 11 and... Three. Just have to get my albums right. Okay. So, first in the collection is um, Health, Peace, and Sweet Content. So, these are our lovely aperture dies. Now, they're clever because you can either create an aperture in the middle or you can have it solid. And what I mean by that, 
it comes with two dies. So if I cut it out with just a die on its own, so if I show you, if I take the die, so that die on its own, like so, will give you that with a solid panel in the middle. If I introduce the circle die that comes with it, okay, what it will do is it will cut out the middle as well. Okay, so that is that one, which is health, peace, and sweet content be yours. Then we have Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So it's the same format. Cut the die on its own and you get the lovely solid panel in the middle. Introduce the circle die that comes with it and you get a lovely aperture within the middle as well. Okay. Then the third in the collection, we're going from round to square. So this is the holly and we've got lovely little robins all the way around the outside. Same concept, apart from it being square. These are five inch by five inch dies. Um, and it's the same principle. Cut it out with the square introduced and you've got a lovely little um, aperture or don't. And then you've got a solid panel in the middle as well. So here's some lovely artwork from the design team. So this one is being created by Galinis, and she's, look, this lovely little, this is one of Tina's angels, okay? So they're perfect for just adding a centerpiece in the middle. Design a paper in the background. This one has been created by Tina. Love that, introducing some lovely flowers. I love the color palette on this one. So not necessarily just for Christmas. Um, then the next one is by D. Paramore. So there's a semicircle. So you can just take part of it. And this is some of Tina's stamps, which will also be on the show. And look, I've got the doodle dies around that. Really love that. Oh, look, if I open this up. And a happy new year. Isn't that clever? I love that. So you've got Merry Christmas on the outside, open it up, and a happy new year. That's brilliant. That's really good. Okay. Then this one is from the lovely Jane. Oh, I love it. Just changing the shape of the card makes a difference as well. Those lovely little, naughty little penguins in there. Love that. Um, then the next piece is from Sonia. Now what Sonia's done, she's taken the parchment and she's done some white work on those leaves. Look at that. I love that. So even if you're not a parcher, you can still introduce all your lovely, and you've got that lovely translucency to it. Then the next piece is, let me just check, yeah, I'm just saying, so this is from Elaine. Now, Elaine has gone from paper piece to that. Isn't that lovely? So this will be a special one. If you're looking for quick and easy, then the dies are fantastic for quick and easy um, Christmas cards. This one would just take a little bit more patience to do. Okay. And then the final piece is from Sarah Brennan, where she's created that drop shadow. So she's die cut in black, die cut in white and then just offset to create that lovely drop shadow effect okay so you can go to so many different levels with our fresh cut dies and my plan so what i did i went through all the artwork and i chose six pieces as my inspiration and i plan to try and do three in the first hour and three in the second hour. Um, I'll try, but um, they're just beautiful, beautiful dies. So groovy, nice and calm. And I mean, the dies are calm as well, aren't they really? Um, so yeah, so that's, I'm gonna pop that over there somewhere safe. So just to, whilst you um, sort out your purse, so to speak, 
that's just a, a reminder of what's happening. And then on Friday at seven o'clock, I hope you can join me for the craft along. That'll be fun. I enjoy those. They're, they're, I enjoy all of it. Um, but like today with Groovy Tuesday, um, the interaction and sort of like the, the feedback and, and stuff like that um, is fantastic. So, um, so yeah, so I'm really looking forward to the week ahead. So I've still got to finish prepping everything, get everything ready, getting all the stuff together um, to take up the TV. But everyone's helping, so that's all good. Okay, so should we go back to the cross tool now? Because all we've done is perforated some parchment. But I really wanted to share with you what was coming up. Okay, right. So let's have a look at what, what has he actually done? I just want to do this one as well. So let me just put my glasses back on. Okay, and let me take the, the tour. So now this time, rather than the um, the dot, so when you look at the pattern, you think, oh, the pattern doesn't like, all you have to do is just twist the tool until the two needles line up. Okay, so I'm going to perforate that one. I'm going to perforate that one. And that one. And that one. Okay. So now, if I remove my groovy tabs and I'm there. So if I bring a, a black piece of card in underneath, it'll probably be better because then I can lift it up. So you can see now where we've perforated. Okay. So we've got some to practice on and some to play with. So when we have a look at the pattern in the book, um, you can see now how the, the white work has been introduced and then a little bit of cutting on there. So if we have a look at this one first, okay, and what we'll need to do is if we go back a page, is it back a page or it's this page, turn the page over. So you can see here where you've got your guide where um, embossing, so we go in and emboss little dots in the middle and then where we do the cutting in there to create the little cross. So I think we'll do this one first because it has a combination of embossing and cutting. Okay. So for my embossing, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring my pink mat into play, my safety net. Okay. We're going to work on the back of the parchment. So now this is quite prickly. What's the, that term you use, um, Glynis? I always forget. Um, it's not sandpaper. Cheese grater. Cheese grater. That was it. Okay. And I'm going to take the number two tool from the starter kit. And what we're going to do, we're going to hold the tool upright. Let me come in on this camera and move myself over here to about there. Cheese grater. Yep, yeah, I got it. Okay. So I'm going to hold the tool upright. I'm using the number two tool. And I'm just going to press lightly and give a little wiggle. Okay. And we're just going to press in the middle of the four dots, okay? Don't want to press too hard, but definitely, if I was applying the pressure that I'm applying now on the black mat, I would have definitely have gone through, okay? So, Kate, does anyone know if Clarity Crafts do the book with a full set of tools for the techniques as a kit? We do indeed. So you, 
we don't put them together because of the price point. But um, I'm sure Stuart could pop the link up. If you just search for Multi-Needle Volume 2 on our website, it'll bring up Book 1 and Book 2, but it'll bring up Book 2, and then it brings up a, um, a pack of all the multi-needle tools that are contained within Book 2. Um, and then the only additional tool I would suggest, which isn't included in that kit, is the One Needle Fine um, tool, just for reperforating. But we do have them separate because it is a price point thing. So, but all the tools are also listed. If you have a look at the book on the website, it lists all the tools that are required or are showcased. And then you can buy a tool a week or a tool a month for whatever you want to do. It's all about having that flexibility. So um, there we go, Stuart's popped the link up for you. Um, so I hope that helps, Kate. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to my design now and definitely holding the tool upright and giving a little wiggle in the middle. A wiggle in the middle definitely help. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, the fan took my breath away. Just as I was about to speak, it sort of, it swung round. Um, yeah, this is definitely, normally when I'm embossing a dot, I would hold the tool at an angle, um, like as if I'm tracing out or writing with a pen. But to get a little dot in the middle, it's definitely better to hold it upright, press and wiggle. Okay. So then... Like so. Now I'm going to try something. I'm going to go with the number three tool and see how big a dot we get. I'll do it on this one. Okay, just like so. I want to see the difference. Maybe the number three tool. But I suppose it depends on how big of a white dot you want in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to put a little mark here like so so when i flip it over there's definitely a bigger dot there than there is on the other three okay so when i turn it over let's have a look let me bring it up to you yeah there's definitely a, a bigger dot well it would be wouldn't it it's a bigger tool <laughs> um so it depends on the look that you're after okay I quite like, well, I like both of them. Okay, so let's go back. I'm going to go over those ones. And it doesn't matter if you squidge your perforations. Okay. Let's see if this makes a difference. It may be because I've gone in with the small, um, I mean, it will go white, bigger, but I may get a, a dot on a dot, if that sort of makes sense. I think in hindsight, I should have gone with the number three. But you know what? It's all about. Um, so, they have gone now, but I've missed all the designs for what is coming on the ODS. So I'll have to watch this again when the video is uploaded. <coughs> you will indeed, Karen. Karin, sorry, um, but I don't think I, I don't think you'll like it. I don't think so. But they, yeah. <laughs> what am I saying? What am I saying? Okay, right. So now we're gonna turn it over. Okay, and what I want to do now is reperforate. So to do that, I'm gonna bring in my super foam, super foam. So I've got the white super foam. And I'm going to put my Pico foam on top, like so. Now, there's no way in a gazillion years I'm ever going to get those tools to line up. Um, there's just too many needles to try and get that to line up. So, the way to reperforate is to take your one needle fine and then hold the tool upright and then just go in 
and repathrate. Now, I reckon, looking at this design, we could definitely go back in with a one needle bolt. So let me grab, let me grab, let me retrieve my one needle bolt from my organizer because I put it back earlier so I knew where to find it. <laughs> and let's have a look at the difference. If I do, let's do these two here with the one needle fine. One needle fine. And now I'm gonna take my one needle bolt. Okay. And I'm now going to now uh, big difference. Look at that. It's crazy. You probably can't see it just yet. When I come in on the, the overhead, there is a huge difference. Or maybe it's these glasses. Um, so I'm just holding the tool upright. That is crazy. I mean, not crazy, but it is crazy because all of a sudden, okay, I've got, for me, it looks different. So let me tell you what, let me come in on this camera. There we go. So, these ones here, these two, have just been re-perforated with the fine needle, okay? These two here have been re-perforated with the bold needle, okay? And it looks, let me, I don't know if I can come, hang on, let me go back on this one. Who would have thought that you could, get such of a difference. So you've got the, the fine, which gives you that lovely sort of delicate. And I, I, I'm in agreement with many of you. I think the bold looks lovely. I prefer the bold. Um, yeah, that's crazy. I knew it would look different, but I didn't realize how different it would look. Um, I mean, when you're re-perforating, whether you decide to go for the fine or the bold, the bold won't always work in some of the multi-needle tools because of the sort of the, the element of the design. Okay, so it's all about just do this, just practice on a piece. I'm going to zoom in really close now, so I'm going to do some cutting. Um, so let me see, we're going to zoom in. There we go. I'm going to see how close I can come in without it going out of focus. Yeah, I really didn't expect that. I knew it would look different. <laughs> but I didn't think it would look that different. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, if I have a look at the, I'm just going to bring the slide the booking, booking, slide the book in. So this is the, the pattern. So what we're going to do now is we're going to snip that way, that way, that way, and that way. Just create the little cross in the middle. Okay, now I haven't warmed up. You've seen I haven't warmed up. So let's see what happens. So snip, 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 snip. Turn my work. It's really weird after going from the, the bold into the fine or the fine into the bold. Okay, I'm gonna turn that around. I'm gonna do the fine first. Just like so. 
Okay, and then the final little snip. Just like so. Let's see what happens when they fall out. Oh, they can fall out if I snip them. Ta da! Um, sometimes you get a little straggler. Come on! It's just hanging on. Look at. Them. Look at that. Let me just. I like it. I like it. And it. It's crazy how the. The larger. Perforations make a difference. So crazy. That's really. I'm not saying I'm lost for words. I knew there would be a difference, but I, re I was surprised at how much of a difference it can change the look of the pattern. Um, so give it a go, play, work on the pattern. I know many of you, what you're doing is that after each week is that you take that pattern from the book and you just practice and you try the different techniques and then it is what it is. It's a sampler of different designs. And then if you follow the Clarity Matters blog each following Sunday, then so this week Glynis will show you how to put it into practice i'm just showing you a couple of techniques a couple of little different bits and pieces um so yeah follow the blog go to the blog there's more detail there and by the time we get to the end of this book i think we'll probably try and do something um i can't think of that far ahead yet i've got to think about tomorrow and the lovely groovy one day air one one day yes one day special and then thursday with the dies and then friday for the craft along um so but we'll have a look at we've got more tools to go through plenty of time so as always thank you for your company thank you stuart for, for helping out design team as always words really do not express um the thanks they really really don't um if it isn't wasn't isn't <laughs> see how kind of a speak now. If it wasn't for the design team, one to showcase off the beautiful artwork that Glynis has prepared for all the blogs, the design team for all the TV shows. Um, so don't forget, check out Barbara's blog later today. There'll be a design of the week, one of my favourite designs this week. I've chosen this one um, for this week. It will give you that timetable of what's coming up. I'm sure Stuart could just pop a link up just before we disappear of Barbara's blog. Um, it'll give you a schedule of what's coming up on TV and Facebook this week. Then tomorrow, ODS, Thursday, ODS and Fresh Cut Dies, and Friday, Craft Along. Um, and then I will be back with you next Tuesday. And what are we looking at next? Let's have a sneaky peek at what tool comes next. So we looked at the cross tool. Oh, the four in four. That looks a nice tool. Oh, I like that. Oh, yes. So, um, so as always, thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope I haven't been too naughty and teased you too much. Um, and don't forget the artwork behind me. Thank you, Jane. Um, I will. I will. So, um, as always, thank you ever so much, everybody. And I shall see you next Tuesday for another episode of Groovy Tuesday. Take care and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye now.